I had this sad moment of historical recognition the other day, and it's been weighing my mind down ever since. So let me start with a problem. My father-in-law, the dude with the two collapsed lungs, a bad heart and renal failure, won't take the goddamn COVID vaccine. He's already turned it down twice, once at the hospital and again at his dialysis clinic. And when we ask him why, he grumbles something incoherent about they've stuck him with plenty of shit already. And then he turns into a grumpy three-year-old if you ask him anything else about it. My wife and her sister chip away and chip away, but the motherfucker still won't schedule it. I figure maybe the problem is that he's an old school sexist and he can't accept that his daughters know something that he doesn't know. So I try, right? I have a penis. I know college words, but alas, I have no more luck than they did. And then I got to watch a master at work. See, my father-in-law has a pretty good doctor. I, I mean, my guess is that the top flight medical talent isn't generally drawn to rural South Georgia, but all things considered, he's got a good one. The, the, the guy's got excellent bedside manner, and he's been doing this shit in this area for better than 30 years, which means he's used to being up to his eyebrows and red hat, MAGA spewing, QAnon believing, Bill Gates fearing rednecks who were already worried about the autism thing even before all that 5G shit happened, right? So when he finds out that one of his patients, an old white guy, no less, doesn't want to get the COVID vaccine, he downs the look of a man who's been down this road so many times he could drive it with the headlights off. So first off, he waits until my wife and I are in the room to do this part, right? And we're there at the end because the guy's on 37 fucking medicines at this point. He needs help remembering what's morning, what's evening, what's with food, what's on an empty stomach, et cetera. So we go through all of that. Lucinda dutifully taking notes on her phone and shit. And then he closes a folder. He clears his desk and he starts in on the COVID vaccine. He starts off by addressing the idea that the vaccine is going to make him sick, right? He explains in plain English how the vaccine's made, how it works, and how much safety testing has been done. And despite breaking it down in up-goer five levels of comprehension, he manages to never talk down, right? He's jovial, but he's not friendly. He's speaking my father-in-law's language, but he's still the authority here. After that, he tackles some of the conspiracy theory shit, right? He goes like, now, you're not one of those people that thinks there's a microchip in it or anything, right? And his tone makes it clear that that would be a stupid thing to believe, but he's not so insulting about it that the patient would be too embarrassed to admit that, yes, that was his hangup. So after he gets verbal confirmation that that's not the problem, he locks eyes with my father-in-law. He says, and I quote, you know, in the shape you're in, if you get this thing, it's over. And then he sat there and he just let those words fill the room like a fog. And then he says, you understand that, right? And he waits. He waits long enough to hear a confirmation. He makes him say, yes, I understand that if I don't take this vaccine, it could kill me. And once he said yes, and only then, the doc leaves, you know, he leaves another pregnant pause, asks us if he has any questions, and he shuffles off. He's done. It was a damn impressive performance. I, I'm probably not doing it justice in my description, but the way he managed to weave in and out of the silly ass objections even before they were uttered was a sight to behold, especially for somebody who can barely walk by a GNC without screaming fuck you into it. So on the way home, I think about the job of these rural doctors, right? People who are inevitably far more educated than damn near everybody else in the town and spend a ton of their time trying to talk people out of their superstitious bullshit without insulting them. Doctors are in many cases like, you know, the town's designated smart person, so much so that we allow them to carry their honorific around all the time, even when they're off work. Think about how few professions we do that for, right? Of course, the historical parallel here isn't doctor. Up until a couple hundred years ago, those motherfuckers were just crazy. You go much further back than that, and you're talking about a town's priest, you know, through much, if not most, of written history, the educated guy talking people around their superstitions in rural areas was going to be a religious leader. I mean, he would be talking them into different superstitions, but like, you know, he, he was going to be given that same level of deference and respect, very much like what small towns give their doctors. And to his historical credit, through most of the history, the priest in question probably was giving people the best advice. I mean, not the, not the best advice possible, of course, but that's a ridiculous standard. You know, the doctors today don't give the best advice possible, but until relatively recently, priests generally gave the best advice available. Our, our knowledge of the natural world didn't really surpass notions of divinity until the 18th century. I mean, at least on a purely theistic level. So up until then, priests served many of the same functions my father-in-law's doctor serves today. I mean, not the medical specialization exactly, but all the important, like, smart person who can talk you out of your bullshit stuff. 
And it got me to thinking what the equivalent would be. Like, imagine if all the doctors all decided that, you know, I don't know, that homeopathy had it right all along. Or, or imagine some better paradigm surpassed medical science and just kept improving exponentially while the current paradigm stagnated. But, you know, like for whatever reason, all the doctors stuck with the antiquated stuff. I mean, that's hard to imagine given the lack of dogmatism in medical science, regardless of what the alt med folks will tell you. But for the sake of the thought experiment, just imagine that starting tomorrow, all doctors stop telling us true shit, right? Or at least stop giving us the best available medical advice. How long would it take us to stop trusting them? I guess a culture. I mean, I mean, keep in mind that whoever was telling us that they were wrong wouldn't be doctors, right? Like by definition, maybe some former doctors would get in the mix or something, but largely it would have to come from some other group standing outside of the traditional structure who would start off with very little credibility, most likely. And even if the evidence clearly showed us that doctors were fucking it all up, how many of us would ever see that evidence? How many of us would understand that evidence if we were seeing it? This is exactly what happened with the priesthood. I mean, sure, to some degree, priests were given respect just because they demanded it or you'd get your ass killed. But by and large, our cultural attitudes to the clergy were formed over time because priests actually were the academics of their day. It, it was earned over a long period by doing exactly the kind of shit that the doctor was doing for my father-in-law. And then somewhere along the way, it decoupled from all of that because knowledge outgrew God and they decided to prioritize God. It, when you consider this, like in its historical context, when you consider the extent to which the religious leaders of today are squandering the cultural inheritance legitimately earned by their forebears, it somehow manages to make their grift even more disgusting. 